In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a unit circle. Now, what that means is providing the x and y coordinates for a variety of points, as well as the angle measured in radians going counterclockwise starting at the x-axis. So, there are three points inside each quadrant that we care about, as well as the positive, negative x and y axes. So, let's start by drawing in those three extra points. One will always be, be halfway between the x and y axis. 45 degrees from the x-axis, and there will always be one below and always one above that. So in the second quadrant, one in the middle, one above, one below. The third quadrant, one right in the middle, one below, and one above, and in the last quadrant, one about halfway there, and then one on either side. Now we're just drawing this as a reference to help us figure out how to solve some basic trig problems, so these don't have to be exact but we know which ones they actually should correspond to. Now we need to fill it, figure out what the angles are and what the points are for each of these angles here. So first let's go ahead and throw in those, um, those angles. If we've rotated none at all from the x-axis, we have an angle of zero radians. On the very top of the circle, our angle is pi over 2 all the way halfway around, well, half a circle, circle is 2 pi, so half a circle would be pi. And 3 fourths of a circle, if each circle is 2 pi, a fourth of a circle is pi over 2, so 3 fourths would be 3 pi over 2. Okay, those are basic ones. If we went all the way around, we could say, instead of 0, we could also just call that 2 pi. Now, what about these one, these angles in between here. Well, the one halfway in between, that's 45 degrees from the x-axis, but remember we're always doing everything in radians, and 45 degrees, well, it's halfway from 0 to pi over 2, so this should be pi over 4. Let's go ahead and put the middle ones in all the way around. This one here is also going to be something pi over 4, but if we count around, there's 1 fourth of pi, 2 fourths of pi is pi over 2. We reduce that fraction, so this must be 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 would be pi, so the one down here in the middle must be 5 pi over 4. And the last one, not 6 pi over 4, we could reduce that to 3 pi over 2, so this must be 7 pi over 4. Okay, so there are all our pi over 4 points, the, one, the lines right in the middle between the x and y axes. We also have points corresponding to some number of pi over 3 and some number of pi over 6. Let's go ahead and put the pi over 6s in first. The ones that have pi over 6 in them are going to be the ones closest to the x-axis. So this one will be a pi over 6. And the next one that has pi over 6 in it will be the one right above the negative x-axis of pi. Now pi is 6 pi over 6, so one right before that would be called 5 pi over 6. Notice we don't use 2 pi over 6, because that's pi over 3. We don't use 3 pi over 6, that would just be pi over 2, or 4 pi over 6, which would be up here, that's going to be 2 pi over 3. We always have our angles in reduced fractions. If 6 pi over 6 is pi, one more would be 7 pi over 6. And the last one we want, again, closest to the x-axis, we're almost at 2 pi. 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6, so this must be 11 pi over 6. And it is. And finally, we have our pi over 3's. This is a third of pi. It corresponds to 60 degrees. And if we go around a third of pi, we get there. Another third of pi is right here, so this would be 2 pi over 3. Notice that's 1 third pi before 3 pi over 3 or pi. Coming down, 3 pi over 3 is already taken. It could be reduced, so we must get up to 4 pi over 3. And finally, 5 pi over 3 here. All right. So there are our angles. Now we just need to figure out what the x and y coordinates of each of these points are. It's not too difficult to do it for the points on the axes. Those will be easy, a little more tricky for the ones in between. 
Let's just fill in the ones on the axes first. Here, this point, it's a unit circle, the radius is 1. This point on the x-axis must be an x value of 1, and we haven't gone up or down at all, so the y value is 0. The top of the unit circle, for the angle pi over 2, the coordinates are 0, 1. When our angle is pi, the coordinates are negative 1, 0. And for an angle of 3 pi over 2, our coordinates are 0, negative 1. I know those just by knowing how to plot the points on the axes. The other points, I just have to memorize. I know there's going to be a 1 half somewhere. I know there's going to be a square root of 2 over 2 somewhere. I know there's going to be a square root of 3 over 3 somewhere. Those are the only points I'm going to write down here, maybe with a plus, maybe with a minus. Now, if I look at my x values, I start as an x value of 1, and as I move along the circle, my x value must decrease to an x of 0. So the first point I want to look at, an angle of pi over 6, the x value must be the largest of these three numbers. And the largest of those three numbers is the square root of 3 over 2. I wrote 3 there. Let's go back. Square root of 3 over 2. So this point here, the x value for an angle of pi over 6, this x value must be the square root of 3 over 2. Going along the unit circle, the next smallest x value, well, that must be the square root of 2 over 2. And the last one, square root of 1 over 2, which is, of course, just 1 half. And now let's put in the y values. A y value start at 0 with 0 radians and go up to 1 when we are at pi over 2 radians. So our y values must be increasing. First 1 half, then square root of 2 over 2, and then square root of 3 over 2. Now, what about the other quadrants? The x and y values are going to be the same, but maybe we'll change some to negative instead of positive. 2 pi over 3, well, this point is going to have the same basic form as 1 pi over 3, and that the x value will be 1 half, and the y value will be the square root of 3 over 2. But the x value is negative because we're in the second quadrant. We've gone left to get to that x value. For 3 pi over 4, well, it's a pi over 4, so it must be square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. But again, we're in the second quadrant, so the x value is negative. And 5 pi over 6 should look just like 1 pi over 6, should be a root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half, but again, the x value is negative. In the third quadrant, we're also going to have, when we have the pi over 6 point, we're going to have a root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. When we're at the pi over 4 point, 5 pi over 4 in this case, we're going to be root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. And for the 4 pi over 3, it's a pi over 3 point, so the x value will be 1 half, and the y value will be root 3 over 2. But now we're in the third quadrant, so x and y both have to be negative. So we need to make all these coordinates negative. And the same thing in the fourth quadrant. Our point, when we have a pi over 3, pi over 3, let's see, the x value is 1 half, the y value is root 3 over 2. But in the fourth quadrant, we've moved to the right, so x is positive, but down, so the y value is negative. At 7 pi over 4, well, it's a pi over 4, so it's got to be root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. But again, the y value is negative. And finally, for 11 pi over 6, we have an x value of root 3 over 2, and the y value is going to be negative 1 half, instead of the positive 1 half for positive pi over 6. There's a unit circle. Take a look at it. See if you think you can do it yourself, and then stop the video. Try to do it completely by yourself, and then come back and check it. Watch the video again if you still have trouble. I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching.